All right, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to give you a behind the scenes look of how I set up my MK Docs material themed website. To get started on this, there's going to be a few things that you're going to need to do. First of all, make sure you have MK Docs material uh, documentation pulled up and ready to go so you can click on the getting started because we're going to need to reference this quite a bit. Also, you'll want to make sure you open up a couple of tabs for squidfunk slash MK Docs material. If you just click this, it'll take you to the GitHub page. Have a couple of those pages opened up because we're going to be referencing some stuff off of there and then you'll also need to download github desktop as well as python which you can download from here if you go to download latest and then down here you'll see either windows or you can pick it up for linux i think on linux you can just get it from a package manager and then you need some sort of an editor. So I used Visual Studio Code for my website. There's other options that are out there, like Vim is a pretty popular one. Just choose whichever one you want. I like Visual Studio Code. Just pick something and go with it. The other thing that you'll need to get started is you'll also need to go to GitHub's website and set up a user account. As soon as you have one created, just let it sit there, leave it open on a tab. Don't do anything with it for right now. We'll use that here in just a little bit. Okay, so to get started, there's a couple of things that you'll need to do when you're setting this stuff up. First of all, when you're setting up VS Code, I would suggest creating a desktop icon because if you're gonna be creating a docs website, you're gonna be going in probably quite a bit over the coming weeks or months or however long it takes you to set stuff up. So having that, having that icon there will make it a lot faster to open stuff up. You'll also want to have the option add to path checked as well as register code as an editor for supported file types. This makes it a little bit easier when you need to open up something on the fly. Go ahead and install that. And then the other thing is when you're installing Python, you need to make sure that this option is checked, add python.exe to path. Go ahead and install that. Now, the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna open up GitHub Desktop. And then from in here, you might notice this stuff is uh, redacted out. That's just because I've got some private repos that I use. So what we're gonna do is click create a new repository on your hard drive. So we'll go ahead and give it a name. This will be the name for the folder as well. So we'll just go ahead and do uh, website test. Let's just go with that. And then you want to set up the path for this. I'm just gonna go ahead and keep it on the desktop for now. And I've also got some stuff on this pre-made stuff here that I wanna show, but that'll come here in just a little bit. Git ignore it. Now, I don't, I'm not super familiar with GitHub. So if something that I say comes across wrong, I guess feel free to correct me down in the comments below. The Git ignore option will give you the option where you can add stuff that you want GitHub to ignore, like files you want it to have it ignore that might be in that folder. That's my general impression of it. I haven't used it yet. For the purposes of this video, when you're setting up an MK doc site, this isn't really something you need to worry about. And then license will give you the option of what you want to choose for a license. I'm not going to choose anything here because it's not important. And also, if you're just going to have this as like a private repo anyway, where you're storing your website, you don't need to really worry about it anyway. So let's just go ahead and click create repo. Now, when you do that, you have the option to publish repository. You'll see over here, summary is required. You've got description. So it created a folder on our desktop. So we don't need to do anything with GitHub repo for right now. So you can just go ahead and uh, move this window out of the way. I'll just go ahead and minimize it. Now I've got this folder here for website test. This is the folder that was just created. What we're going to do here next is click open in terminal because we're going to need to do a few things in here to get MK Docs set up. All right now, the first thing that we need to do is start Python inside of a virtual environment. Anytime you're coming in and editing stuff inside of uh, the MK Docs theme, you need to make sure you run this command every single time. This is extremely important, or otherwise, you can just end up with a mess. Stuff won't be working right. It's Python M V E N V V E N V with a space between there. That will start Python inside of a virtual environment. It'll take it a moment for that to work. Next thing we need to do, you only need to run this command once. We are going to install mkdocs material. Now this pip is a Python command and mkdocs material is a Python package. So that's why we're doing this. The reason that I'm choosing to do this as opposed to installing this through uh, git clone. So you can go here and just clone the repository. The reason I'm not doing that with this website, you can do it with yours if you want to. The reason that I'm not doing that is because I want to be able to extend the theme. And I will show you later what that means. 
because that will allow you to make some more custom changes to your website. So now we're gonna go ahead and install this inside of our folder. It'll take a moment, it's gotta download everything, install all of the dependencies. And once that is done, you'll see this has now created a folder inside of here, VENV. It takes a moment to install this stuff. And also you'll notice when I'm running stuff on here, the reason it's lagging a little bit is because I'm running this inside of a virtual environment. Basically I needed a computer to be able to run all of this stuff from the beginning to be able to show people what it is that needs to be done. Okay, so now you'll see that VENV is done. It's got all of our files that we need to get started here. Now the next thing that we need to do is start up the environment for us to be able to work with. Now the command that I'm going to use for Windows is this. Now I'm gonna show you something. As soon as you try to do this, activate this PowerShell script, you're gonna get this error saying scripts have been disabled on the system. This is a uh, protection method that Microsoft has built in to keep uh, certain PowerShell scripts from being able to run. Basically it's a safety feature. I'll show you how to work around that in just a moment. If you're on Linux, what you'll need to do is run this. So it'll be source venv forward slash bin slash activate. You'll notice on here it's venv backslash scripts backslash activate.ps1, which is a PowerShell script. This won't work if you're on Windows. You'll just get this error here. So what you need to do to be able to run, run this PowerShell script is you have to do this. So it's set execution policy. Basically, this is allowing uh, PowerShell to be able to execute that script. The thing with this is I have set this in here to only work for the process that's open right now. So as soon as you close out PowerShell, now I've allowed that. As soon as you close this out, it prevents from being able to open up PowerShell again and run stuff. This is uh, better for security. So that's why I have that set to that way. So now I'll just go ahead and scroll up to activate PowerShell script. Also, if you want this stuff already, so something you can just copy paste to use, this will be in Saturday's newsletter. I'll have all of the steps written out on Saturday's newsletter that's coming out. You can get to there through the website. Uh, if you go to the website here, kenharris.io, and then go to letters, it will take you over to the newsletters. The reason I don't want to put this in here is because this is a security risk on computers, and I don't know if YouTube would potentially flag the video if I'm putting PowerShell scripts in there that would uh, potentially compromise any sort of security stuff. So that's why I don't wanna have that in there. Now you'll see that we have our virtual environment ready to go here. So what I'm gonna do is type in code and a dot that will open this up inside of Visual Studio Code. Okay, once this is ready to go, you'll see, do you trust the authors of the files in this folder? In order for this to be able to work, obviously you have to click yes, I trust the authors of this file, and you'll see we have some basic stuff. You can ignore this download Git, you don't need Git on here. There's other document sites out there that will require things like Git or will require different things other than Python. For the purpose of this video, we're just sticking with MKDocs theme. Now they wanna go up here, go to terminal, and click on new terminal. When you're doing this, you wanna type in MKDocs new with a period, click enter, and you'll see a couple of new files get created, mkdocs.yml and an mdex markdown file. Everything inside of these document, uh, inside of mkdocs is done through markdown files, which are actually really easy and really straightforward to use. It might look complicated, but there's probably some good YouTube tutorials out there. I'm gonna show you what I've done with my website. I'm just gonna get you through the basics so you can get set up and then we'll start up my website and I'll show you on the back end how it is that I have everything set up. So once you have that done, you'll want to type in mkdocs serve. This will allow you to start up your new website. Now when you get this started up, you're gonna see, well this looks like kind of like garbage. There's really nothing there for me to work with. Don't worry, we'll, we'll get there. So I'm just gonna go back here before I do anything else. I just wanna go through this real quick so people know. So when you first, so anytime you close out visual or, or anytime you close out VS Code, close out uh, PowerShell, what you need to do is go back into your folder. That's the fastest way to do it. Go back to your folder, start open in terminal. You need to run this code, this command first, Python M V E N V. This starts your virtual environment. Then you need to run uh, this V E N V scripts activate. This is if you're on Windows. If you're on Linux, you'll need to do this. And if you're on Windows, you'll have to type this in first and hit enter before it will let you activate the PowerShell code. Now, if you're on Linux, I haven't tried this on Linux yet, so I don't know if you need to use something similar to this. 
uh, for Linux to get this to activate the virtual environment. Then once you do that, then you do code dot, and that's for VS Code. So it might be something different if you're gonna use Vim or a different editor. Like I said, I'm just using uh, VS Code because that's what's been working well for me. So now that we've got this website, we need to pull this up so we can see stuff, see changes that we are making in real time. Now the next thing you'll notice, so this mkdocs.yml, this is an extremely important file and this is where a lot of your work is going to be done. Your index or your markdown files are important. That's where all of the meat of your website is, but a lot of the stuff that's going to allow you to make changes to your website will have to be done from mkdocs.yml. Okay, now, so if we go back to this installation here, we'll go ahead and click on creating site. Now, like I said, we're gonna have to reference this quite a bit, but the first thing to do to make this actually look like the MK Docs material theme instead of just regular MK Docs. So what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and copy this theme and name. There's some stuff inside of here that I'll show you here in just a moment. We're just gonna go ahead and click save. So control S saves. As soon as you save something, it rebuilds the, the website locally in real time. So if we go back to the website, you can now see this looks a lot different. This is a lot closer to what it is that we're trying to do with uh, our website. So this is where you're gonna have to start making a lot of changes as to how it is that you want the website to look specifically. So inside of your docs here, this is going to be where you put all of your markdown file. So if I were to create some new files here, let's do test1.markdown and do test2.markdown. Now it's created these new pages in here where you can go in and start editing things. Now you might notice on my website here, I've got a whole bunch of different stuff. I've got this HTML or this banner that I used up here through HTML, I'll show you how to do that here in just a little bit. I've got my own custom icon, I've got my own website name. I've got these and they are in a custom order up here. And I've got all this, I've got a table of contents. You're going to have to do all of this stuff through the mkdocs.yml file. So here's what I'm gonna do just to get started. We'll, like I said, we'll come back to my full website where I go behind the scenes on this stuff. What we're gonna do just to get started so I can get you up to speed on what it is that I've got going on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this entire section of features. Now you get these features through the website, uh, the mkdocs material site here. So if you go to like setup and then you click on, let's say setting up the footer, this where the, you'll have to start filling in these features as far as what it is that you want. So you can see like, here's a feature for navigation footer, features for header auto hide. This is stuff that you'll have to customize to your liking. This is stuff that I just decided to go with for my website. Whether or not you wanna do that on your website is going to be entirely up to you. You'll also notice here this, when you're working on stuff, I don't know if it's different for like Vim or whatever, but for VS Code, this stuff is extremely sensitive to how you have things formatted and set up. So you'll notice there's a very particular way to how all of this stuff is set up here, the spacing, all of that. If you don't have this stuff set up in a very specific way, you will break the website and have all sorts of issues. So what I'm going to do is click enter. I'm going to paste all of this stuff in here. I'm gonna go ahead and save it. And as you can see, it says that an error happened during the rebuild. It's because basically now it's like thinking that this features belongs under this option here of name. Let me go ahead and click back on here. We'll go ahead and save it. Now it's corrected the error and now the website is back up. So let me show you what this does. So I've got a few different things here. So I've got content code annotate that allows like annotations within code. This allows links within like uh, tabs. This allows the header to hide. So when you're scrolling down the page here, it hides the header. It's mostly straightforward, but if you ever wonder about stuff, so like you can come up here to the search function. This is one of the things that I really like with an MK Docs website, where it has this ability built, a really good search ability built into it, which is really nice. So you'll see there's header auto hide, dismiss, dismiss the announce feature up here which would allow you to basically close this out and dismiss it. Then you have like pretty obvious stuff like navigation footer, navigation indexes, sections, tabs, uh, search highlight, search share, all of this stuff. This stuff is all documented thoroughly, so I'm not gonna cover every single option that's out there. Like I said, this is just what I went with for uh, the purpose of my website. So now that I've got that stuff in here, here, you'll notice some stuff has changed. So now I've got my test one, test two are up here. 
as opposed to being down here. Also notice there's some other stuff that's not on here yet, so I don't have the light theme, dark theme option. I've got the search field up here where I could type in stuff, but I don't really have anything to go search yet. So we're gonna need to work on that next. Okay, now, so let's go ahead and add in a light theme and dark theme. So I'm gonna copy over what I've got in here for my palette into this existing website here. We'll go ahead and paste it, save it. And now, because I have dark theme set up by default, so I have palette theme, uh, palette toggle set up here. <clears throat> and then this lower one is light theme. And so that's why, so like if you open up my website, it defaults to dark theme because my main website is also a dark theme website. And so you can click and change up here. You also have the option of setting up all of the different colors that you want on here. So there's like deep orange, teal, pink. So let's go ahead and just set this to, let's say, t well, that's not gonna work. Let me set that to teal save it now it changes this website and then you also have your accent color which is right now set to deep orange so anytime you hover over like a link or you have something actively selected uh, it will show as that deep orange color all of those color options are available inside of here when you go to setup click on colors all of the different options are in here for you to customize stuff now the next thing you're probably wondering well what about this navigation thing the navigation part becomes a little bit complicated it's where you're gonna have to spend some time customizing stuff so by default when you're filling like when you're creating new MK or markdown files, you'll have all of this stuff to start filling out where it's like, okay, well maybe you don't wanna have it set up like that. So here's the other thing you can also do is you can also set up folders from within here. So I put test in here and then I dropped the regular test file in. So now I've got test up here, which is the name of the folder. And I've got, so then it's got the name of the folder there and then it has test one. Now it looks a lot nicer to have your navigation set up custom. If you're going to have this set up as like a private docs site for just you where no one else is gonna be able to see it, you could totally just go with this. Or if you wanna set up something public or if you are working inside of a business and you're trying to set up a documents theme website and you're looking at this video as a way to try and figure this stuff out, what you have to do is set up custom nav inside of this YML file and you have to do it. Once you set this option here for nav, you have to set every single markdown file separately. Like I said, it becomes a little bit of a pain in the ass when you're first doing this, but it's really not that bad. It's pretty straightforward. Once you kind of start getting the, the handle of things, of how things work, it becomes a lot smoother. So I'll go ahead and show you how, guys how to do this. I'm gonna get the website here that I have already set up. I'll fire that up so this stuff will start making a lot more sense. The one other thing that I'll go through real quick is just how to get this hosted onto a platform. There's a few different ways you can publish it. If people want individual vi or videos explaining how to do this more in more depth, I can certainly do it. It's really not nearly as complicated as it sounds. So first of all, so we've got our files in here that are ready to go now. So now if I go back to GitHub desktop, you're gonna see 1014 changed files. This is just because we've got the initial website set up going on here, so we've got all of this stuff. So it takes a little bit of extra time when you're first doing this. And then we have our test files in here. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and click and type a summary because it's required. So I'm gonna say publish uh, website, and then you can put in, you could just do something like initial creation of website. Now you have the option to commit to your main. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. It will take in a moment just because I've got so much stuff in here that's being added. It's a for basically creating that repository for the first time uploading all these files. Now it will say, do you want to publish your repo to GitHub? I'm gonna go ahead and click publish repo. It will ask the, what the name is that you want. So I'm just gonna go ahead and leave that like it is. And I'm gonna go ahead and keep the code private. You can uncheck this if you want to. I'm just gonna keep it private for the purpose of this website. You can certainly change it later if you want to. I'm gonna click publish repo and you'll notice up here, it says writing objects. Basically, it's just uploading all those files and getting everything ready to go. Now, if you go back to your GitHub account that you created that you have just sitting idle right now. So then go to GitHub, open it up, refresh it, and then you'll have the option, option to open up your website and you'll see your repository here. Now, from this point, you've already created it. And so when you've got your 
uh, GitHub desktop stuff open here. So let me just go ahead and come back in here and make a change. So I'm just gonna move this out to here, out to the main docs page, and I'm just gonna go ahead and type something in here, save it. What I'm going to do here is just go back here and you'll see that, okay, a couple of changes are in here. Now you'll see that this has been added. So if you have a bunch of text in here, let's say you delete one paragraph, add another, it will highlight in red what's getting deleted. It will add in green what is being highlighted. And you can see here, so it's just removing this out of here. Just make sure you pay attention if you're gonna go in and make changes, just make sure you're, you're kind of up to speed on what's going on here so you don't unintentionally uh, upload something that you don't wanna have, have something break or anything like that. So then we'll just go ahead and I'm just gonna type in test in here. Commit to main. Now it hasn't pushed these out yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and click push origin. Then it updates those files. And so if you come back onto your repo here, again, I don't use GitHub a lot. So if something seems odd the way I'm explaining it, certainly feel free to say something down below and let me know. But now you can see it's got your new uh, changes that have been posted in here that you can click on and see. And it'll also show you now when stuff has been last changed. So now that we've done all that, that's the basic part of getting stuff set up. So now let's go ahead and talk about publishing. So there's a few different options. You can use GitHub Pages, which is free. You can also use, uh, I know Cloudflare Pages is free. That's a pretty popular one. Another popular one that's free, I think to an extent is Netlify. I think both of these also have paid options. So each of these has setup options as to what it is that you need to do. And they give specific set it or specific uh, steps that you have to take to set stuff up here. So I'm just gonna click on Cloudflare pages real quick. Let's say you wanna host through Cloudflare. It has automated deployments, which is actually pretty slick. So if you're going in, you're changing stuff, you make changes, you publish it, it will automatically rebuild and update on Cloudflare pages, for example, within a matter of minutes, and it will have those new changes that are on there. So the way this works, just read through these steps, it's pretty straightforward. This is basically assuming that you've already uploaded your uh, stuff to GitHub here. So like I've got set up on here. So then you link your GitHub account to Cloudflare. And then it talks about insiders. If you want to sponsor the, the MK Docs material site, you can get access to insiders. It has some extra features, but you don't have to do that. So you can just set this up and it will tell you, okay, so now you need to add a runtime.txt. Well, that's if you're using a non-default version. But so like it'll say, okay, add a requirements.txt to the root of your project. And then it'll say MK Docs material. I'll show you this here in just a second. That way it makes more sense. But literally all it is is you just put your version number in here. So if you go to MK Docs material right now, let's say that you added this today, go back to here. So be like 9.4.14 is literally all you would have to put in the material version. And then it gives specific steps to get all of this stuff set up. It's pretty straightforward. So this is if you're using insiders build, so you could just ignore this if you're a new user. It looks complicated. It's really straightforward. Again, if you want a video of this being set up specifically for like Cloudflare pages or Netlify or GitHub pages, just let me know. But it's pretty straightforward. Stuff that can really trip people up is going through and making these specific changes to stuff to like this YML file, which is what I'm gonna get into now. So now I'm gonna swap out these files and show what it is that I actually built inside of my website. Okay, so now that we've got this fired up here, I'm gonna go ahead and show you what it is that I've done on my website because uh, I think one thing that can trip a lot of people up is the documentation for this. There's a lot of really particular areas when you're going and setting this stuff up of how stuff needs to be done specifically. Like I said, at least from within VS Code, I imagine it's probably the same if you're gonna use things like Vim or one of the other editors that are out there. So there's a few different things I'm gonna show you on the website of how I got this set up. So you can see I've got a custom banner up here. First of all, basically all I did with that is I went over because Squid Funk has this set up on his main website already is I just went into his files and I grabbed the HTML that was out of here and customized it for my needs. It, I found it in MK Docs material, source overrides main.html. So I'll show you that here in just a moment because there's a particular way you need to set that up. I've also done things like where I went in and added icons, icons and emojis and stuff like that. 
in here as well. So I will also show you how to set all of that up. I will also show you how to set up the main or the, the external links in here. So let's go ahead and get started because we've got quite a bit of stuff to cover here. So the site name, so I've got it set as Ken Harris right now. That's all it is, is this right here. So if I changed this and took like, let's say, let's change this and change that. Now it takes that out of there. So that's all that does. Then what I did is I set theme. So you always have to have material in here. Now, one of the things I have an overrides directory. I'm going to come back to that here in just a little bit. The other thing is I have a custom uh, favicon set up. So that is inside of images and then favicon.png. So you can use your own here if you want to. Here's what that is for those that aren't familiar with building websites. That is the little icon that shows up here. And then on mobile, you also see like that when you're like if you have Safari or whatever opened up and you click on uh, a website, it will also show that. So like your most viewed websites, it will have the favicon shown on there as well. That's all of that is. I would suggest setting it to a custom setting to whatever it is that you want for your website. You can just choose to use one of the pre-made icons. So I just went with the uh, cowboy hat over here because it's kind of becoming part of my brand now. Language, you can just set this to English. Now there is options inside of MK Docs for multi-language support. And you can, so you can test this and change this out what I would recommend is that you just set one language to start. And then if you want to have stuff translated, you can do it later. And it will give you an option to go ahead and change stuff on the website. So you can see there's an option will show up by the search bar that will let you select a different language. But I imagine most people are probably just going to want to start with one. Now this next thing is an icon and then a logo. So I just chose to stick with uh, the cowboy hat over here. I also, like I said, I used this as the favicon up here, but I also just stuck with that. I just used one of the pre-made icons. If you want to know how to change icons and what the different icons are, what you could do is go to the uh, MK Docs website, click on reference, and then click on icons, emojis. There's a search bar here that will allow you to uh, search different things. So if you type in network, so these are part of Google material. And then there is also, if you close out of here, there's also, um, so there's material design, font awesome, octacons and simple icons. So you have quite a bit of a selection. I think there's uh, 10,000 different icons and thousands of emojis that you can use. So there's plenty of selection as to what it is that you want to have shown. And so like he's got on his website here, he has all of the different icons listed next to the title. I basically modeled a lot of my website off of what the developer Martin had already had for his website. Now the different features, if you type in features, if you type this in specifically in the search bar, it will show you all the different options. I'm not gonna cover all of these because there's quite a few of them. Some you may want, some you might not. Now the next thing is plugins. So you see the first thing that's listed on here is typeset. Let me go here and show you what typeset is. There's built built-in typeset plugin. This is what allows to be able to use icons over here with uh, this stuff and then use icons up here if a person wanted to. And so it says here, this is how you enable it, plugins, and then you do typeset. Now I also added search. There was a I didn't see it on this page. I can't remember what page is on now because there's a lot of documentation on this website that if you do, if you add like a custom plugin here that it will disable search. So you have to enable search separately. So I went ahead and added that back in. And the next thing I've already gone over this is the color palette. So you can switch. You could just get rid of like, let's say light theme and just have a dark theme for your website. Or if you just wanted light theme, and you could go ahead and get rid of this and then you would only have one option there. I'm leaving both as an option for people to be able to use. Now this next one is Markdown extensions. And so one of the things that I have enabled on the website is admonitions. So if you click on reference and go to admonitions, this is basically what these are, is these different options here where you can come in and change stuff. So you'll see like note, abstract, info, tip, success, question. These are the pre-made ones. So you have all of these that you can choose from. And then you can also set up custom admonitions. So if you scroll down further, it says here's how you set up custom admonitions. And then here is a custom one 
uh, with Pied Piper as the name. And what I did for my website is I went and set up a custom admonition so I could have YouTube, the YouTube video tutorials show up when people come to the website. Like I talk about BitLocker. Someone's like, oh, okay, well, how do I actually set this up? Well, I'll use Cryptomator here because I've got a separate section for BitLocker as well. But I set up a custom admonition <clears throat> so when people come to the website, they can see, oh, it's a YouTube icon. It says Cryptomator tutorial. They can click on it, open this stuff up. I will show you here in just a moment how to do this stuff inside of Markdown files. For right now, we're just going to keep plowing through the YML file and then I'll get to this other stuff. So these are all the different custom admonitions. You also have the option of making these collapsible or you can just have them so they're like this. The way that you do that is just by setting the three excla setting three exclamations or three question marks. Again, I'll show you how to do that here in just a moment. I also have these other options in here, uh, details and super fences. These basically build out. So like if you go over here and type in super fences, open this, it will show you like this is, I uh, use target code blocks. Just so you can change different stuff inside of code blocks, which I haven't really been using with my website yet, but I figured I'd just go ahead and add those. You have to add this if you want to do, if you want to be able to use like emojis and icons, stuff like that, you need to add this in here. And then I also have table of contents with a permalink. So here's what that is. So in my website, you'll see that I've got the table of comments over here. And then also on each one of these sections in these markdown files is I have headers. So this is a permalink where you can click here. And then like someone could save this and then come back later and reference and just go straight to this section of the page or click over here on the table of contents. Again, I'll go over that in the markdown files here specifically shortly. Then you have your copyright section. So I just have a basic one here. You can extend this further from HTML later if you want to. I just have the basic copyright set up for right now. Then you have uh, extra CSS. I'm gonna cover that because I've got that over here. This was what I needed to make the custom admonition. So if you want a custom admonition, you will need to add extra CSS and basically fill it out just like it is here. Then there's the extra se section. First of all is this generator. I set this to false. Now here's what that does. It sets it, so let me scroll down to the bottom of the website. This says made with material for MK Docs insiders. So if you don't have, so like you could set this to true, for example, and it will show this down here. I set it to false. Now, he, the developer has asked that people leave this enabled and, or they could become a sponsor because he would like to get recognition for his work. I disabled it, but I've also been very open that I've been using MK Docs material. So if you're going to use this and have it as a public project where people can see it, I think it's just common courtesy that you give credit where credit is due because I do wanna give a shout out to everyone that's developed this project. It is an insanely good option to build out documents websites. Because if you guys haven't seen, I've got videos on my channel, you can't find the link anymore. The way that I had my old website set up with all of this different info set up on there, it was horrible because I had way too much info and it didn't work on the old website. These document websites are super nice. So again, common courtesy, just give credit where credit is due. Then I also have social links set up here to go to my different social media platforms. And so the icon, this is just a folder of where it is. So here's what this is. Let me show you this real quick. So icon, I have font awesome slash brand slash YouTube. Here's how you set that up. So let's go ahead and go back here to the MK Docs website. We'll go to reference emojis. So let's type in YouTube. Now there's a few different options in here. So you could use font awesome, or you could use material, whatever icon pack you wanna use. So basically how I came at that is you click on this copy to keyboard would be like the fastest way you could do it, I guess. Paste it over here. But because this is going to the actual folder structure, you have to get rid of these uh, colons here and you have to replace the dashes with forward slashes. So that's how I came up with that. So that's an easy way to find whatever icons you want. Then I have the external link to each one of these websites. Nav, this is an important section. So let's go ahead and get started on this. So first of all, you'll see that I've got on my main website here, these are all external links that I have too. So you can go to like YouTube, for example. So if I click this, it goes to the YouTube channel. 
I'll just go ahead and click back here. So these are all external links. That's how you set those up is literally all you do is go in here, you type the name of what you want with a colon, put a space there, and then put the link to the external website. That's how this set up. Here's where it starts becoming a slightly more complicated to be able to set this stuff up for your nav links. You're basically, if you're gonna have a bunch of stuff, you're pretty much gonna have to do a custom nav section, kind of like how I've done it here, and like how uh, Martin has uh, the main MK Docs website set up, is you're gonna have to set all of this stuff up manually. Like I said, I know it seems like a bit of a process when you're first getting started, but once you kind of get the hang of it, it becomes a lot easier. So let me go ahead and do this side by side here so you can see how I have this stuff set up here. So I've got knowledge base up here. And so that's the name of this tab. So we're starting from the top here, then we work our way down. So then I've got the start here section right here. And then I wanted start here to reference from index.markdown. And so if you open up index.markdown, then I'm gonna go through the markdown section here in just a little bit. I'm just working through the YML file. I'm just gonna go through this piecemeal first. And so that's the start here section. And then I created opsec right here. That creates a new section right here. So that's a break saying, okay, well now we're going to a new uh, type of content that's being discussed, which is opsec. And I obviously partitioned it out between like uh, network security, hardware and software, all of that. And then so then once you do that, so basically what you do is you hit enter, you're gonna have to tab forward, then you start with a dash, then you hit enter, then you put your little, uh, they're not quotation marks, I can't remember what those are called off the top of my head. So then you type that in, put your colon, you do another space. Now I've got it broken down into specific folders for this as well. So I've got opsec slash opsec intro dot markdown. So if I click over here, there's my opsec intro dot markdown because I want it, I've got so much documentation on this website. I needed to make sure when I was setting this up from the get go that I was doing it in a very neat in particular way. So it didn't turn the website into like this total out of control mess that was gonna be hard to fix later. The more work you put in up front on doing this stuff, it's going to make life way easier down the road. You start adding stuff rather than having this huge out of control mess. So it's pretty straightforward from there as far as all the different stuff that I've got set. And then I've got it set down here so you can see. So nav starts right here, the position. So I'm gonna mention how it is that you structure this stuff. The position, the spaces, the tabs, everything is extremely particular on VS Code and you can break the website and have errors if you don't follow the exact way that this stuff's supposed to be set up. So let me go ahead and put a tab there on nav. We'll go ahead and save it. Now you can see it is completely broke how all of this stuff is set up. Now I've got a mess up here and I've got all of these pages down here that are completely screwed up. So in this case, it didn't generate an error. It still let it work, but it completely changes things. So again, this comes back to where you put your spaces and where you're putting your tabs. Everything is extremely, extremely particular on this website here. And the same thing goes for like markdown extension. So if I save this, it's gonna, it's gonna break stuff. So like now my admonitions don't work anymore. And there, there'll be like other little things here and there that don't work. So how you have, like I said, how you have this stuff set up, if you want, you can just pause the videos you're going through or making your website, pause it and see how I have stuff set up on here because this took me a little bit of time to figure all of this stuff out and get it set up to work properly from the get-go. But once you have this YML file kind of configured how it is that you want, then things become much easier and straightforward because at that point, then all you have to do basically is work on your markdown files, except if you wanna have some other stuff added in there as well. So let me go through some other customization stuff that I did on my website. Then I will cover markdown files. I'm gonna save that for later because I figure a lot of people probably already know how to do a lot of that stuff within Markdown or not, whatever the case is. So now this next section, so I've got custom directory overrides. So let's talk about that because I talked in the video about it first about extending the theme. 
So if you come up here and type uh, extend, oh, that's my website, let me go to his. So extending the theme. So I talked about why you don't want to clone from the GitHub repo and why you want to install from Python instead, because if you do it this way, then this stuff is, you're gonna have a harder time being able to come back later and get this stuff to work. So, because I have the stuff set up from the get-go how I wanted it, now I can come in here and sell this main.html. This is the, this is what gave me the option to be able to have this custom uh, banner up here. And so, like I said, I just, I just used uh, Martin's HTML code to start with and build a base off of. And so if you want to, you can just go and do that. I've got it set up here. So it's mkdocs material src overrides main.html where you can just copy what he already has here and then adapt it to what it is that you want to do with your website. So I changed some stuff up here and then I wanted to add the change logs so people can see. And then obviously people can come in and change this to set like, oh, here's what's new on the website, for example. So you can just come in here and change this around as you want to. It might take a little bit. One thing to pay attention to, I noticed this in VS Code. I don't know if it's this way in everything. So let's say I wanna take out this, so I'm just gonna make a change here. Hit save. Now I've saved it but you won't, you'll see that it doesn't update right away like it would if you changed a markdown file. So now that I've saved it, what I have to do to get this to work is come in here and I'll just use a markdown file as an example, save here, then it pushes that update out. So when you're making changes to this, you're not going to see it right away. If you save from here, you have to come in here and also save like in a section where it does that automatic rebuild of the website. Now the other thing I'll cover real quick is making a custom admonition. So what you need to do here is make inside of docs, you'll need to start a style sheets folder and then make an extra.css file. Now here's how this stuff's set up. If you're new to this, this stuff might be a little tricky to start. It's not too bad once you kind of get the hang of it. So I just took and worked off of what they had here as a custom admonition. So if you scroll down here, scroll to the bottom, they have this code here, so what you could do is just paste this over to the extra.css file. And then, so they had like Pied Piper here. I wanted this as YouTube, so that's why I replaced everything with YouTube as opposed to what they had as Pied Piper. Then I also changed the color, so you can come in here and change the color in here to an RGB value. I just used red because that's what YouTube uses. Now, the next part, this is one thing you really uh, have to key in on here is the custom icons that are on these website or on these admonitions. So you'll see like there's a, an X here and an exclamation point there and a question mark and all of that. So here's how you do that. So you have to have this string here to start with. You need to keep this. Now you'll notice there's this big long string here for the actual icon itself. Now this is the YouTube icon. Here's how you pull that stuff up. So you cannot use, so I showed earlier where you could go here to the emojis and icons, type in like YouTube. If you try to use something like this, if you try to copy this or you try to use like the directory instead of like how it's set up here where you have like the forward slashes, it won't work. You have to have that custom section of code. Here's how you get that. So to be able to pull that code, you need to go to mkdocs material, material, templates, and then icons, and then whatever it is that you wanna select. So let's say you want to use, uh, in this case, I'll just use the font awesome uh, YouTube icon. So I need to come back here, go to font awesome, and then, well, let's just say I scroll down to YouTube. Let's use the Amazon. Let's just click on amazon.svg. So this is the icon. What you have to do is click code, copy all of this here to get that custom admonition icon to work. You have to copy all of this and then you can come over here, paste that into VS Code. That is what you have to do to get the custom icon to work when you're creating a admonition. Anytime you see this SVG and you've got all of this, uh, all this stuff here, that's how you have to do is you have to copy that code instead of using the actual location of the image. So now that I've covered all of that, if you have any questions so far, make sure you drop them down in the comments below. This seems really overwhelming when you first start. It's really not that bad. Once you get started on this stuff and you kind of get in the groove of making changes, editing stuff, adding stuff, it's pretty straightforward. This is a really good, MK Docs is a really straightforward platform to work with.
Now let's cover some stuff inside of Markdown. So that way people have an idea of, like if you're new to this, what it is that you need to do to be able to get stuff to work. Okay, so the first thing, so I've got icon up here and I have folder lock. So here's what that is, is on my website, encryption. Here's that icon. So I had to make that change inside of the mkdocs.yml, which was through this typeset plugin. And like I said, you also have to make sure this stuff is enabled into here as well. But that's what enables you to be able to use the icons for uh, the, like the titles of stuff. So I've got the icon material slash folder lock again. Let me just cover this one more time. Here's how you get that. So you get that from going over here. So let's do folder lock. So there's material folder lock. So material is the name. So font awesome. Here's how to get this stuff to work. If you're working with font awesome. So you'll have font awesome forward slash solid forward slash user lock or you would also have like font awesome slash brands slash YouTube. So you need to change this depending on what it is. So font awesome has these individual folders. Here's how you figure out the folder structure here. We'll just go ahead and go back here. So font awesome has these different folders. You have to make sure you're pointing to these or otherwise you'll get errors and, and the icons won't show up properly. Material just has everything, all of the icons dumped inside of there. Octacons, same thing. The one that you have to pay attention for is font awesome. That's where you'll have the, the further uh, subdirectories. Now this next thing, so you also have, you'll also notice that I've got these two hashtags up here in an encryption overview. These are noting specific um, headers for your markdown file. So I've got this encryption overview. So let me go ahead and collapse this down. This is gonna be a little bit hard for me to do. I'm just gonna have to switch back and forth. So this denotes like the specific header structure. So this would be like an H2, so you can see here. So you have your main, well, so if I just got rid of this, let me just take this out of here and click save. Now it takes that header out of there entirely and it's just going off of the name that I gave in the navigation file for encryption. So I'll just go ahead and put that back because I wanted that there for my table of contents. These are important to have these headers and subheaders in here for your table of contents if that's stuff that you wanna have. So let me scroll down further here and you'll see, so I've got encryption in detail. So this is an H2 Then I've got an H3. So I've got three hashtags that puts this under encryption in detail because these two sections were basically tied to each other. And then when you scroll down further, you'll see applying encryption to your digital life. I wanted this as an H2 then this as an H3. Let's cover the admonition section here real quick. So I've got these three exclamation parts. So here's how you start a markdown or an admonition within a file. So I'm just gonna do a note admonition. Now if I just click save on here, let's go ahead and scroll down here, you'll see that it's added note, but there's nothing in there. So you can add one or multiple paragraphs here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click tab here. It moves this entire paragraph forward to note that that is now going to become part of that admonition. I'll go ahead and click save again. Now that's become part of that admonition. You can add multiple paragraphs. So if I wanted to add this to the warning section, I'll go ahead and click save that, scroll down. Now it has applied this paragraph here to be part of this admonition. <clears throat> if you want a collapsible admonition, you replace the exclamation points with question marks. Go ahead and save that again. Now you can expand this admonition. That's why I wanted that for the YouTube admonitions so I could come in there and change that. Now let's say you do wanna put a YouTube video in here for admonitions. Here's how you can get YouTube videos to work inside of uh, MK Docs. Like paste them inside of MK Docs in particular, but also inside of like an admonition, all you have to do is go to, let's say a video here, go ahead and click pause on that, click the share button, click embed, and then you'll just copy this code. And if you wanna do privacy enhanced mode, which I did for the videos on my website, you can also just copy this. You have to do it for every single video that you're gonna copy if you want this option. Click copy, and then all you have to do is just paste that inside of your markdown file, put a tab, and then it will move all of that inside of the admonition if you want, or you could just keep it outside. You could just have it somewhere on a page, you know, like in between here. You don't have to 
put it inside of one of those admonitions if you don't want to. Now, as far as going and making your markdown files, these are actually way more capable than what I've been using on my website. You can do like code blocks inside of these and you can make it so people can copy and paste code out of the code blocks. These are really capable of a lot. I've been using them in a somewhat simple fashion on my website because I don't need anything complicated on the website to be able to do stuff, but the option is certainly there if that's what people want. And there's plenty of documentation here as far as how to do stuff. And then also what I would also recommend, if you're gonna work with Markdown, you can find videos. There's a lot of good videos on YouTube of people working with Markdown files because there's a lot of platforms that use Markdown. I think Docusaurus uses it. There's, there's a lot of other doc websites that use it. I think the second brain applications also use Markdown files. They're capable of quite a bit. So let me just pull something up. Let me give you an example here of just stuff that you can do inside of here. So let me pull up the intro page because I know I had some links here. So this is an example. So I've got inside of brackets, I've got this section of text that I want uh, to be clickable on. And then inside of parentheses, I put the external link. So what that looks like is when you go back to the start here, here's what that looks like. So now it's got the external link down there in the corner of the page, and this is a link you can click on. So in a nutshell, that is how you set up a MK Docs material themed website. I know this stuff looks super complicated. I can assure you when you start getting into it and you start making changes and you're setting stuff up, it's not that bad. Like it takes a little bit of effort. It takes a little bit of time to get this stuff set up. But once you get past that initial bump of getting stuff going, it goes a lot faster because now I can come in here and here's the thing. So for the people that might be wondering, well, why should I even create one? If you're going to do something like I've done where there's a ton of documentation, on my old website, let me pull up the old website here. So you, you can't click on to, this goes to my new website now, so you can't pull that up anymore. It was, anytime I added a section here and tried to add all the info, it was an absolute pain in the ass. And it's not a fault of the website platform itself, it's just because there is so much stuff that I was trying to add in there that it did not work on this platform. It was just too much stuff to try to add in here. So that's why I went with a separate website. And so once you get past that initial hurdle of setting stuff up, then let's say you wanna set up a new page. All you have to do is come in here, put wherever it is that you want it on the, the nav bar, then come up here, create a new markdown file on your website, and then you just start working on your documentation. It's literally that simple. I mean, this is an excellent platform to work with. Strongly recommend it. For your typical home user, I don't know how much you guys would use it for. Like, so you could just show it off and as a project. I've got this on here because I want people to have like a public way to learn about cybersecurity stuff. But this could also be if you're watching this and you work for a business that needs like internal processes to improve on and document stuff. These, these markdown sites or these doc sites are becoming more popular among a lot of people. I, I gave an example. There was one for prompt. I think it's learnpromptengineering.org or something like that is built on DocuSource. That's a really good example of a public website. Another way that these are being used is also locally from within a business, a lot of times they're being set up so that there's basically like a playbook there. And that's kind of how I'm taking things with this website is where I'm eventually going and building out this, this stuff so that there's playbooks that people can come in and follow. Like, oh, okay, you wanna set up BitLocker on Windows. Here's the specific set of steps of like best practices. Here's the things that you have to be careful of having those playbooks. I mean, that's just one example. These are, this is a really great platform. Strongly recommend it. Like I said, if you guys have any questions, drop comments down below and let me know. I will maybe come back later and do videos on this. If people want to see this, I will make videos like, oh, well, how do I publish this on a Cloudflare page platform? Or how do I publish this on Vercel or Netlify or GitHub pages? Like I said, this part of it is actually really straightforward, but if you do need a little bit of extra guidance, I can certainly make videos on it. I just figured there's so much other stuff and we're already well over an hour into the video at this point, so I need to try to edit as much of this out as I can, but still keeping the important stuff because some of these videos just go way, way too long. Anyway, like I said, if any questions, drop them down below. Let me know. 
And with all that being said, I will see you in the next video.